Okay, uh, our first uh, company we're going to look at today, Paul, is Capri Holdings, CPRI. Do you have it up there? Yes, so Capri Holdings owns Michael Kors, Versace, Jimmy Choo. Um, it also looks like they have, um, uh, so it's a big high-end retailer. There's another one, Louis Vuitton. They're a higher retailer that's foreign. This is not based in the U.S., so let's start checking it out. Here we go. Let's look at, what is the market cap for Capri? Oh, $6.3 billion. So remember, guys, this is the amount of money you pay to own the company in full. You don't look at the stock price. I haven't mentioned the stock price yet. I haven't even looked at it. I couldn't guess what it is. It's the number of shares outstanding times the stock price. So you're at 6.3 billion to buy it all out. Pillar number one is PE ratio, okay. which is price to earnings. And they want this less than 20, Paul. It's non-existent. They've lost 400 million dollars in the last 12 months. Uh oh, that's that's well, that's a, you can see that, right? That's that was coming, right? Yes. Now, so it's an X, but it's not a bad one because due to the recent downturn, I'm sure sales of higher end goods have probably gone down a lot. But in the last quarter. They have an 11% profit margin. Check mark there. That's pillar number two. We want the profit margin above 10. Pillar and the big thing is high-end goods, 64% gross margin. So they have a very high gross margin. For every unit they sell extra, they make 64% of that in bottom line profit. Pillar number four is revenue, revenue growth. growth. 4.7 billion. It fell a little bit, and we're at 5.6 billion. So check mark there. And they did buy Jimmy Choo and Versace in the last in this time period. So I don't know how much of this growth is organic growth, like internal growth versus making acquisitions. There is a difference. You want to be able to see, I remember once I'm going to an investment thing and a guy was bragging about how they got 80% growth in their company over a 10 year period analyzed. I went to him afterwards. I'm like, how'd you do that? He goes, oh, acquisitions. I'm like, okay, that's not the same thing, but I get it. So mm -hmm. it has been, um, you have to watch for the acquisitions and we can look at that later in the cash flow statement. How about profit growth? Pillar number four, profit growth over the past five years. Okay. So Profit growth is an X because of the loss from 839 down to loss of 230, 223. But um, the thing I'd want to focus on mostly is uh, this is the first quarter of 2020. It was our last fiscal year. So it's kind of, I mean, my, it's kind of surprising. Let's look at their last 12 months. Make sure you guys are, make sure you all are tickling the thumbs up. We really appreciate it. And if you don't like what Paul's saying, you can give that thumbs down a little tickle. Um, Paul likes those too. Both tickles. He's in favor of, you know, you know this. If you know, if you've been watching the show, you know that Paul loves to get tickled. And um, so well, with that said, quarterly. Let's make look sure at you're the, smashing it. Go ahead, Paul. Do your quarter the quarterly. Numbers, your boring numbers. Go ahead. Last quarter of, of, the, of, of last year, they had profit of 210 million. And they lost 550, lost 180. And this last quarter, they're back to profitable. So that's something that's showing, okay, they're coming back into profitability here. And in terms of revenue, I'm going to look at revenue comparison. And this is important to do in certain stocks depending on time frame. So this last quarter, they did 1.1 billion. The same quarter last year, they did 1.44. So their revenue is down about 30%, but they still showed a profit, which is a good sign. So things might be turning around for them. Are we on shares outstanding now? We are. Pillar number five is we want the number of shares outstanding. So we want it to be decreasing, and it has been decreasing. 186 to 150, big check mark there. That's a 20% drop in, um, in shares outstanding. Why is that good, Paul, for our new so viewers? The, the, when you own a share, when they buy their shares back, you still own, let's say you have a company with 10 shares and you own one of them. You own 10% of the company. If they all of a sudden buy back two shares, there's only eight shares outstanding now. You now own one share of eight, which is 12 and a half percent. So they've essentially given you more inter, um, ownership of the company by you just being patient. So we like that. I mean, if we like that to a certain level, but in this situation overall, I don't, I don't like seeing shares going up because the exact opposite occurs then. Pillar number six is current assets greater than current liabilities. Paul, we want them to be able to pay their bills. Current assets is 1.63 billion. Current liabilities is 1.58. So it's a check mark, but barely. But it is a check mark. So uh, that is a check mark there. Pillar number seven. Your your your. This one's very near and dear to your heart, which is the free cash flow growth. Paul, you want that free cash flow growth over the past five years being nice and awesome. Okay, so here we have about 870 million. And recently we had 640, call it. So that's an X there. Okay. Now, obviously, this, this one year included the big loss in the first quarter, but let's do the average over the last five years. So it's, a, it's 870 and then 830 and then not, uh, 880 and then 510 and 640. The average free cash flow is about 750, Paul. Okay, so 750. So guys, here's where we talk about what number we multiply by. This is all dependent on growth. We see declining free cash flow. Does that mean that's gonna happen for the future? I don't know. That's part of the extra 
research you need to do because the multiplier we've picked there is based on the future prospects. If you see a lot of growth potential in the revenue and profit, you're okay higher, adding an extra, doing a higher multiple of, of, of price of free cash flow. Mm -hmm. I think in this situation, you want to keep it around 12 or so. So that's $9 billion. Yep. And what are they currently selling for? 6.3 billion 6 .3 is the market cap. billion. Guys, this might be something to look wait, at. Wait a minute now. Beth, my wife, Beth, Geo, my son, get your pens ready. Get your, get your, open up your Fidelity app, Paul. Yep. So this is 6.3 billion is currently selling for it. I'm talking about, so this is currently selling for about 8.5 times free cash flow. This doesn't happen often on our show, It does show, not happen folks. often. So this is actually pretty good, guys. So let's regroup. This is Capri Holdings. Their PE is non-existent. Their profit margin is good. They have revenue, but not profit growth. Their shares are decreasing. Assets over uh, assets over liabilities was good, Paul. Free current assets over current liabilities. Free cash flow is not so good. Now here, well, it's declining, but declining. I put a low multiple in there. Now here's what the things, so somebody's gonna sit there and go, oh, it's Paul buying. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna sit there and determine, are we doing more research into it to determine if we wanna buy? Right now, the multiple, here's the, here's the point I'm making. When people say, oh, Paul only cares about income, this company lost money in the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. Lost a lot of money. But I see the turnaround happening. The last few quarters have been getting better. This has future potential still. Let's see what the last 12 months of free cash flow was. That'd be a good indicator to see. They even had free cash flow, even though they lost money in the last 12 months, they have free cash flow <laughs> of eight, uh, $580 million. So it's currently only selling for about 12 times, not even 12 times, 11, no, maybe 12, uh, no, 11 times free cash flow in the last one year. And that last year included COVID. So I think there's a lot of potential here. Those are good brands. Um, I would take a look at those brands. How are they doing overall? And see if this is a company that can become like Louis Vuitton, which is, I mean, Louis Vuitton is a very high end, very, very high end. I mean, Louis Vuitton is so high end. They don't. If they if they over if they over um, manufacture products, they burn it. They oh, yeah. don't they don't have a discount area. They don't do it. They just burn it.